Right. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our Digital Transformation Summit. For your information, it is Thursday morning. And some of us got up really, really early. I had somebody tell me that they came in from Richmond. Thank you for that. It's going to be a great day. Um, I'm Kelly Schultz, and I'm the CEO of the Maryland Tech Council. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the Tech Council, shame on you, just kidding. Uh, we are the largest technology and life sciences trade association in the state. With more than 80 events throughout the year, we are the premier voice in the state for the technology and life sciences community. And we work year round to advocate for our members' interests in the local, state, and federal level. It is really great. I've had a wonderful morning um, reacquainting myself with some of my old friends and meeting some new friends. So thanks, everyone, for coming out. And this is technically my first Digital Transformation Summit as CEO. I am five months into this job, and I could not have found a happier home. So thank you, everyone, for, for being here today. And for those of you that are in the room, what I have heard about our signature events, which of course this is one, is that this is your most anticipated event that the Tech Council does. So we are going to make this a successful day with your help and we're gonna to continue to do this in the future. Um, I think you're gonna to love today's lineup. We have superior voices within our ecosystem that are gonna talk about the things that you really care about and how to move forward. Um, we're going to hear from so many leaders in the community, but I think for me, uh, one of the highlights is going to be able to hear from our new Secretary of the Department of Commerce, Secretary Kevin Anderson, who you will hear from in just a moment. And by the way, I've met him several times. If you have not met him, he's super cool. And, uh, and he understands this industry and he wants to be a good supporter of ours. There has been one scheduling change um, in today's agenda. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Mike Whistler, who is the Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Information Officer at M&T Bank, he has the COVID. So um, he's unable to share his keynote with us, but a special thanks to our very own Chip Stewart, a former CIO for the state of Maryland. He's going to fill in the gaps and he's going to make sure that we know everything that we need to go. Talking about navigating what it is for our digital transformation. Um, I would like to thank our sponsors. So um, let's everybody appreciate what they were able to give for today for the summit. Our title sponsor, SCNH Group. Our title sponsor, and I don't <laughs> wave. It's oh, right over here at this table. Thank you very much. We really very much appreciate that. Uh, the cocktail reception, you should stick around. The sponsor is by Info Pathways. Thank you very much. Our registration sponsor, thank you to our long-term and continued partner, Tedco. Our gold sponsors, Alpha Point Capital, Children's National Hospital, Cubic, Iron Bow Technologies, of course, the Maryland Department of Commerce, MindGrub, Starburst Data, and Exometry. Our silver sponsor, BTS Software Solutions, and the Maryland Tech Council's strategic partners who are sponsoring with us today, AstraZeneca, AT&T, Avantor, Horizon, Kite, Lilly, Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation, Pharma, Pfizer. Please, everybody, we couldn't do this without all of our great sponsors here today. Telling the good story about what we have to tell and helping us to catapult ourselves into a new mission. So talking about catapulting, I just want to make a really big announcement today. So at the beginning of the week, uh, we surpassed 700 members, company members at the Maryland Tech Council, which is really huge. As a point of reference, this time last year, we had just over 500 members. So it's been a really exciting year for all of us. And um, of course, I can't take any credit for that. So I give huge credit to our Maryland Tech Council staff um, and professionals that are here today. And um, I'm just gonna call them out and they're probably in the front doing some sort of business something. But we have Wendy, who everybody knows, 
We have Amy, who was here helping Wendy with the event. Michelle, everybody knows, our chief operating officer. Pam is constantly on you about your membership. Thank you, Pam. We have Min running our IT today. We have Jeremy, who's leading up our chapters. And I just want to, and Alex, who's working on the Biohub. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all of them. And then, of course, our Steve Pennington, who constantly hounds you about what you're supposed to be doing at the Maryland Tent Council. So thank you very much, Steve, and the entire cast of characters that helped us to get to where we are today. Um, because we have a mission. I also want to point out, um, this is the part of the Maryland Tech Council that's the tech part of the board. So for those of you that might not know, we have a full board, and then we have within our full board, the Life Science Board and the Tech Board. And so I want to thank David Tone for being the chair of our Tech Board, and of course our chairman of our board, uh, Todd Marks, um, overall. But we want to be able to make sure that we have programmings and value for all of you that are associated with the tech side of the house. Thus comes our cost savings program. And this is what we're really pushing this year to make sure that all of you know what opportunities are out there and available. The cost savings program is a wonderful way for MTC members, if you are a member, your company is a member, the other people in your company are members, uh, you can save on business costs for a whole wide variety of uh, business operations. And we have a flyer that's up front, so I wanna make sure that you, you look at that because you can basically pay for your membership through saving money through our cost savings programs. And we wanna make sure everybody takes advantage of that. And it's everything from insurance, um, cyber liability, property and casual. Um, we have uh, UPS. You know, there, there's just one, many wonderful things for businesses to take advantage of. You can also enhance your employee experience with discounts on HR benefits, um, small group health plans, and human capital solutions, and guidance on submitting grant submissions. And we all know the increasing importance of us being un be able to understand grant submissions at the local, state, and federal level. So we're really excited to be able to put that forward for you. All told, MTC members have saved more than $12 million through our cost savings programs. And I would say that that is probably a pretty good return on your investment. So make sure you check out with one of us to see what you can do for that. Um, mark your calendars for upcoming MTC signature events. You can find all of our events, including monthly conversations with Kelly. I will just retract that in its conversations and coffee with Kelly because conversations with Kelly is trademarked with a pastor in Ohio. <laughs> and we were told to stop advertising conversations with Kelly. And I said, okay, so we're gonna have conversations and coffee with Kelly. Um, we have those coming up. Those are monthly. Um, many of you remember the wonderful coffees with the CEO with uh, Marty and how good that is for networking and just being able to get that out there. And so we're happy to do that. Uh, we have breakfast with your tech board chair, new member orientations, chapter events, and more. And you can, of course, get all of that at our website, mdtechcouncil.com. April 27th is a really big day. Um, some of you in the room are, are being hosted that, that evening. It's our industry awards celebration, and that's at the Bethesda North Marriott Hotel and Conference Center. June 12th is MTC's annual golf tournament up in Hunt Valley at Hayfields Country Club. Um, that should be a spectacular day. I'm promising you great weather, great friends, and a great day all, overall. And October 30th is our other signature event for our other side of our board, which is the Bio Innovation Conference, and that's being held at the Bethesda North Marriott, um, the hotel and the conference center. Um, so I'm really happy to be here. Um, just wanted to share a couple of housekeeping items for you. If you are in the social media mood this morning, please use hashtag MTC Digi Summit 2023. And that, look at, we have that down right down there, the hashtag. Please use that. Uh, we would love to be able to spread our news uh, wide uh, to be able to make sure that we do that. 
For those of you that have not been into the exhibit room next door, please go and visit our wonderful exhibitors who are here today talking about the great things that they are doing and create that networking opportunity because we're all about building the, the ecosystem. And just in case you wanted to get home early, I will just reemphasize that at 4.30 this afternoon, there is a networking and cocktail reception. So if you stick it out long enough, we'll all be able to have a glass of wine at the end of the day. And most importantly, if anybody in this room is not a Maryland uh, Tech Council member, we have a wonderful staff up front that can help you become a member of the Maryland Tech Council. And don't think that they won't track you down. Um, so thank you all for your continued support uh, in Maryland's technology community. We have some wonderful things coming up. Um, and on that note, I am really excited. We are about to kick off the fourth annual Digital Transformation Summit, and I wish you all a great, great day. So now I get the privilege to introducing someone that I have the utmost respect for, um, our next speaker, Mr. New Secretary of the Department of Commerce, Kevin Anderson. Kevin is founder and CEO of Cardinal Atlantic Holdings, an economic and community development firm targeting scaled social impact and investment in urban centers with specializations in real estate and education technology. CAH advises funds, corporations, and governments in economic and community development strategies and projects. Mr. Secretary, thank you. He previously served as the Senior Vice President for Global Partnerships at EverFi Incorporated, an educational software company for financial literacy and life skills education where he led government relations and conducted business development. Before joining EverFi, it says here Kevin, but I'm gonna say Mr. Secretary was appointed President and CEO of City First Homes Incorporated, a six million community land trust created to support workforce housing and ensure ongoing affordability for working families in the District of Columbia. Launched in 2008 as the district's most aggressive affordable housing initiative, City First Homes navigated the financial crisis stabilizing mixed income development and created over 100 units of affordable housing. The secretary began his career at the investment banking firm of Pryor, McClendon, Counts and Company in Philadelphia as an institutional bond salesman. He served pension funds, insurance companies, investment advisors, and money center banks. Mr. Anderson provided coverage for PMC's landmark financings as lead manager for the $320 million Atlanta Hatsfield Airport financing and the $390 million Denver Airport financing. He is the former chairperson of the NEA Foundation's Board of Directors and recently completed 19 years of service, 19 years of service on the Board of Trustees of Lawrence Academy. He is a member of the Leadership Greater Washington Class of 2006 and Leadership Prince George's Class of 2008. Maybe he'll go through Leadership Maryland at some point in time. Um, he's a native of Washington, D.C. Mr. Secretary holds a BA in economics from Stanford, uh, Stanford University and has completed finance, leadership, and executive education at the JFK School of Government at Harvard University and the National Development Council. Mr. Anderson lives in Upper Marlboro, Maryland with his wife, the Honorable Tiffany H. Anderson and their three children. Mr. Secretary, thank you and welcome. It's always uh, flattering uh, when I kind of, you know, hear that bio. I'm, my my parents are no longer with, with us. My mother's no longer with us. I wonder what mom would always say, uh, just to have the uh, the blessings of uh, of the accomplishments. But Kelly, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I want to first say thank you uh, to all of you for your leadership, and especially the Maryland Tech Council, um, Wendy, David, and Todd for your your leadership and the team. 
uh, it's just great to see uh, to see the energy and the work. I have to tell you, in the in the six weeks, seven weeks that I've been on the job, um, the governor got it right. I mean, we have fantastic assets. We are a supremely asset-rich environment, uh, especially with the people, and I have been wonderfully inspired by it. Just want to give a couple quick thanks, personal thanks, uh, uh, points of privilege that I have. Uh, I see one of my good friends, uh, Troy Stovall here, the uh, CEO of TEDCO, uh, training our classmates together. And uh, when Troy got appointed in, 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 2000 and, uh, in, in 2022, 2020, um, we talk all the time and we had some great conversations about, we both happen to be Prince George's County residents too, you know, as well as former classmates, about just the wonderful opportunities and the promise. And uh, I give Troy a great deal of thanks for our relationship and sharing the vision of what we know clearly what Maryland can be and, and how great of leaders we can be as a state in, uh, in technology. And also I want to give a real special heartfelt thanks to, uh, to Kelly Schultz. Um, you know, when you take a new job, especially as expansive and in a, in a really, really uh, complicated word, but uh, a, a, a broad opportunity, you want to make friends and you hope folks who've done the job before will kind of share some ideas and share some thoughts and keep you from some of the potholes. And Kelly's just been so gracious and kind um, and hardworking and visionary in her support for her. Kelly and I have had coffee, we've talked, and I've really, really appreciated that. So Kelly, a real personal thanks for you for that. Um, now I'm just going to have a couple brief remarks just to, to welcome, and won't, won't keep you very long. Um, but again, uh, you know, through the, uh, through, the, through the Tech Council and, and working at Commerce uh, so far, um, there have been a lot of conversations. I know Kelly we talked a lot about uh, prosperity and what, what Governor Moore and what we're bringing and the ideas and the thoughts are dovetailing really, really clearly and connecting to it, uh, really clear in the space of the governor wanting to make Maryland more competitive. So competitive so that when businesses are looking to expand or open our new facilities, that our state is not just one of the choices. We're the only choice. We should be the ultimate choice. And we're going to be competitive because we have great assets, from our federal agencies and laboratories, to our colleges and universities, and to our talented and highly educated workforce. But one of our most important assets is what we're doing today is our capacity for innovation. You know, where we have it here, our location is just absolutely critical. It's critical to our economy, to our local economy, and to the national economy. And we're a place where new ideas can take root and flourish and where new technology develops. And for that, I want to thank all of you and the people in this room. You are the innovators, the leaders in Maryland's business and technology communities. And this summit brings us together to share ideas, to learn from each other, and to inspire us to harness the potential of technology and new discoveries. Cybersecurity, manufacturing, biotech, quantum computing, medical technology, these are just some of the many assets where we excel. But we can be even stronger. I'll give you one example. In our budget hearings this season, I asked lawmakers to approve $10 million for the new Build Our Future Grant Pilot Program and Fund. This is one of the governor's priorities this session. It will provide funding for infrastructure and projects that support innovation in a number of key industries. They'll support things like new laboratory space for biotech or quantum computing, secure information facilities, and prototype manufacturing centers. These funds will help drive growth and discovery in these critical industry sectors, and that will help Maryland compete. That will help us show the world that when it comes time to finding a place to launch or grow a new business, Maryland can stand shoulder to shoulder with anyone. And with new investment and new jobs comes a better quality of life, better schools, better health care, safer communities, and a brighter future for everyone in the state. We want a meaningful economic growth that touches every corner of Maryland and brings new opportunity to those who need it most. For those of you who are attending the summit, and the ideas that will be discussed today are critical to that effort. So let me formally say thank you today for all that you do and for your commitment to moving Maryland forward. I'm really honored to be here and honored to, uh, to be your partner in beginning to work with you and connect all of the wonderful resources and push our state forward. And thank you so much and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you.
Well, thank you very, very much, uh, Secretary. And I know everybody in the room is looking forward to getting to know you um, a little bit better. Um, at this time, um, it is my pleasure uh, to invite David Tone, who is the chair of the Maryland Technology and the chief executive officer of MTC Software Solutions, and he's going to welcome and give remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, while I'd love to be the CEO of MTC, uh, that's your job and you're doing a way better job. I'm BTS, um, a much lesser and, uh, and less august an organization. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, Secretary, I appreciate your comments and, and your joining us today. Um, welcome, everybody, to the fourth annual Digital Transformation Summit. You'll hear that a couple more times this morning. Uh, Maryland Technology is the division of the Maryland Tech Council uh, that provides a forum to further economic development discussions in our community through support of innovation and commercialization of advanced technologies. We've come a long way since the first DTS in September of 2020, and then COVID all in between. Today we have over 200 reg registrants, a full day of sessions, round tables at the end, networking opportunities, and my favorite part, an open bar. So please stay for that. I will say, a couple years ago I was at a conference and we did a panel like this and they had wine served right after lunch for the panel members and everyone else. It was a great conference. And I highly recommend we do that next year. Mimosas for the before noon, I think. We have a great lineup of speakers and experts uh, in their industries and our keynote speaker. Uh, and Chris, thank you again for stepping in. Um, no COVID? Good, good, all right. Um, uh, and for those who are leading the speaking sessions and the round tables, we appreciate your support as well. Thank you to our committee members who helped put this together. I'm gonna actually ask you to stand up uh, so that we can recognize you. This does not happen by accident. And there was a lot of ideation all the way through on what we think our audience needs and would appreciate and would help and is, in con and is consistent with our uh, mandate for helping our companies do better uh, in their businesses and their communities. So if you were part of the scrums that it took to put this together, please stand up. All right, thank you. Where's Sarah? <laughs> all right, good, so thank you very much, who's there. Uh, so those are my prepared remarks. They said I get to speak for an additional two to three minutes before introducing Todd, so stand by. <clears throat> so I just came back uh, from a four-day conference. It was the Defense and Secu National Security Innovation Sidecar Conference in Austin, Texas, that uh, happens adjacent to South by Southwest. Uh, I learned two things there. One is that innovation only comes if you have great hair, no socks, and sometimes a cowboy hat. Um, and so I'll point out in our audience, we have both Todd. Uh, uh, Bernard, I saw you in here. I think you had socks on, but you have great hair, I would point out. Where are you, Bernard? Yeah. Look, uh, check him out there. And the other is a phrase called transformation, I'm sorry, innovation theater. And it's not a positive term. Innovation theater is referenced when you have a lot of motion, very little movement, a lot of hand waving about this is what we're doing that's really cool and hip and great hair and no socks about innovation and in all the different sectors, but really there's no tangible outcome to it. Uh, everyone feels good at the, at the time and then really can you show an ROI? And so I would ask the same question, is there such thing as transformation theater and digital transformation theater? And I would offer that we spent a lot of time thinking through the conversations today to make sure that the content we're providing you is not theater. It actually is tied to the two basic questions that you should be asking yourself about anything aligned with innovation or transformation, digital or otherwise. As a business owner and a community leader, but mostly as a business owner, you should ask yourself, will this make me money or will this save me money? Those are the two questions. Those are the only two questions that matter when you're making decisions about what you're gonna to do to transform your company. Sometimes it'll do both. And if you can answer those questions, you have an ROI that you can then measure. Have I actually increased my sales? Have I saved money? Have I reduced exposure? Have I done other things from a social or community equity perspective that helps position my company and my leadership team as thought leaders in our community? All of those things need to go back to basically why you're in business. 
do good, make money, save money, take care of your people. So you're going to hear a lot of conversations today about things like AI, RPA, remote process automation, digital media, cyber, quantum, just general processes, et cetera. There's so many words you can put in the word digital transformation, and they mean a lot of things. But I'm going to ask you to listen to the content we're providing, because I think we're going to give you some ideas and some framing that you can take back to your company and to your leadership and, and have a conversation about what's our, our, our ROI. Are we going to make money if we do this? Are we going to save money if we do this? And if I have to prioritize resources, which resources am I going to pr prioritize to achieve that? And at the end of the speakers, we have roundtables set up. So we're going to give you framing, we're going to give you ideas, we're going to give you some content, there'll be a little bit of Q&A, but you should you take advantage of these roundtables to dig deep and understand how, you know, with the speakers and the subject matter experts, to understand how you can actually take something back to your company, to your leadership, to your day-to-day, -day, and make some decisions on what am I going to transform? If anything, maybe you don't need to. I'd be surprised. Um, and then understand your ROI and ask yourself the question, will spending the time and energy on this make me more money, save me more money, and however that plays out? All right, I think I stayed under three minutes-ish, and I didn't say anything that embarrasses Kelly. <laughs> uh, I would like to welcome, uh, speaking of great hair and no socks, Todd Marks, our Maryland Tech Council board chair, uh, my predecessor as the Maryland Tech chair, uh, and the Chief Executive Officer of MindGrub to come up and say a few words, and then we'll lead into hit the panel that he'll also be leading. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everybody, so much for coming out to our fourth annual Digital Transformation Summit. And as um, David eloquently said, it is about transformation, digital transformation, return on investment. Um, but this year is more than that. This year is going to be one of the most exciting and thrilling years of your lives. And I'll tell you how I know that. It's because we had a bank collapse this weekend. So the history of MindGrub, I had a company in uh, the late 90s called Digital Organism with some friends. And after September 11th, when the World Trade Center collapsed, um, we didn't have a sustainable business model. We didn't have the capital. But I started MindGrub in 2002. We hit 20 years um, last fall. And that was a really growth year. We went from zero to one person. I mean, that's huge growth right there. Um, but then it was myself in and out of jobs. I worked for Deloitte. I was in uh, Chicago. And then in 2008, the top of 2008, they released the SDK for the iPhone. And that was a huge transformation year for me. And I quit my day job. I held up in uh, my basement. I hired UMBC students. And I started making some of the first mobile apps out there. I was still on assignment with this Deloitte company, and I was in New York, and uh, that same year was a collapse of Lehman Brothers, and I remember walking by Lehman um, with seeing people walking out of the building with um, boxes as they were shutting down that business. Um, then you fast forward a couple more years, 2012, there was also a bit of a financial crisis there. Um, at that point, mobile was really taking off for us, exploding. 2020. We all lived through the pandemic. Everybody had a very transformational year that year. We all went virtual. We shifted a lot of our, what were analog processes to digital. We moved things into the cloud, right? Very, very disruptive year. And that disruption carried on relatively for the next couple years without much change, right? And a lot of businesses, they had huge transformations in 2020. We've been largely just kind of riding those for the last couple of years. Well, here we are again, 2023, and we had a bank collapse. And that bank was actually in the tech industry, right? Silicon Valley Bank, we've all heard about this. Um, they banked 50% of venture capital-backed startups in the United States. And they collapsed. Luckily, the FDIC came in, and they shored them up, and everyone's getting their money. They generally got their money back on Monday, so crisis averted. But I know because of that, it is going to be a highly disruptive year. Right? All the indicators are there. The bubble has been in tech, right? particularly domestically. Our costs of our talent have gone up through the roof because they can stay from home and work three jobs at the same time and demand more money from all of them. Right? But the world got very flat in the last couple of years as well. So a lot of us are considering nearshore and offshore. Right? And there's a lot of opportunity there, and there's still a lot of margin in rates that we can get with, with using a global supply network. 
but also it's a very disruptive year because, as David said, he talked about information theater, right? But I think information theater, when people start talking about things, it's because it's right before that, that kind of crossing the chasm happens before technology gets adopted by the early majority. And this year we saw that happen in January, right? Where we now see AI get over that early, that early chasm and now we have early adopters and ChatGBT has been talk of the town the last couple weeks. If you're not on ChatGBT, you absolutely should be because if you're not working with AI, it's going to replace you, particularly in this room. We all thought the long distance truckers were gonna be the first to be replaced. No, it's, it's knowledge workers. Um, if you were in marketing and you produce content, instead of writing that content now, you basically are gonna do what the industrial industry has done, manufacturing with cobiotics, you're gonna work alongside AI. And it's in that early majority now. So I'm super excited to see the disruption right in front of our faces. I'm excited for all of you to be able to talk about that disruption today. As David mentioned, we have a number of amazing talks um, from what is the information theater, but how is that gonna also provide good return on investment for your business. We have other talks on digital transformation. And then we have round tables at the end of the day where you can really dig in and talk with some subject matter experts to learn some of these technologies and how you can apply them to your business. And then followed by a happy hour where we can do some additional networking. So thanks for coming out. I know this is gonna be an amazing year. I'm super happy to see this in its fourth year, second year in a row being in person again. It's really good to see you know, everyone's faces and not, not the virtual world. Um, but thank you for coming. Um, we do have just a couple minutes here um, to grab a quick cup of coffee and you're right back in this room because we're gonna have our first talk um, that I'm gonna moderate and it is on um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the good and the bad and the ugly about some of those technologies. So you won't wanna miss it. Um, it will revolutionize your businesses in the next couple of years to come. So thank you, you have a two minute break. Grab coffee, grab a snack, you're right back here. <laughs>